Bungie confirmed at the final Shape Showcase and trailer that the Guardians will in fact visit a new realm inside the Traveler itself. The Witness's portal created in Lightfall leads here to a place of beauty and destruction. Shaped by whoever resides within, you will see many different types of architecture. From creations shaped by our memory like the Destiny 1 Tower, to strange frozen statues constructed by the Witness. Today we are going to further discuss what we know about the inside of the Traveler and the new location we'll be heading to in the Final Shape expansion. So before we get into new details, here are some of the quotes from the lore about the inside of the Traveler, what others have theorized themselves in the story, like ghosts and scholars. From Ghost Fragment Ghosts in Destiny 1, although this lore could have changed, it's still interesting to look at. Beyond, it is a place, a place casting shadows and emotion. It's a real place, I know. One hot blue sun, say, and other suns too. Five, I like seven better. What I'm recalling is a giant star with a family of six smaller suns, and you can spend days and nights counting all the planets circling those suns, Except there are no planets, not anymore. The powers in charge have carved up all the worlds, and maybe a brown dwarf or two for good measure. With that rubble, they fashion a topologically creative enclosure, a twisting of space and time sealed behind doors that admit only those who know the magic words. The bones of a hundred planets have been cut smooth and laid out like a floor, a polished and lovely floor creating vast living spaces. A floor bigger than 10,000 worlds, catching the fierce glory of seven suns. For light, for food, for beauty, and nothing escapes. Not heat, not gravity, not even the faintest proud sound. It could be anywhere. It could live in the cold between galaxies, or folded up inside matter near enough to touch right now. I remember it, and maybe it's exactly as I describe it. Seven suns wrapped inside magic. Or it's something else entirely, perhaps, a place still fat with life, an abundance of sentient souls, some decent, maybe a few lesser quality, and everybody stands about or floats about, or they bounce between dimensions. The point is that the residents of this hidden realm live inside a bottle so perfectly hidden that they can't see beyond their own borders, which shapes a mind in very specific ways. But beyond is their name for a mysterious, doubtful realm they can't see, which is us, of course. In the Difference of Opinion card, two ghosts discuss the inside of the Traveler. One says, I remember it, we call it the Womb. Imagine a cosmos inside a bottle, trillions of stars orbiting each other in a complex weave. But they aren't stars. Perhaps a better word would be souls. Souls dancing in an infinite space enclosed within a celestial egg. So there you have two different entries, one from Destiny 1, one from Destiny 2. The first one discussing a hidden realm where residents live in a bottle so perfectly hidden that they can't see beyond their own borders, which shapes a mind in specific ways. Then Balthazar's description of they aren't stars but rather souls dancing in an infinite space. Imagine a cosmos inside a bottle. In the Akashic Record lore card where Joxer enters the portal, some crazy stuff happened with him and his ship seeing into the future and past, but just the title Akashic Records is interesting. It's described as a compendium of all universal events, thoughts, words, emotions, and intent ever to have occurred in the past, present, or future in terms of all entities and life forms, not just human. From concept art, the veil was described as the window into the mind and memory of the universe. Together with mind, veil, and physical creation, Traveler, this place was opened, inside the Traveler, where reality is shaped to the user's being. 
In the last entry from Veil Containment this week, Osiris speaks about the Traveler and the Veil, theorizes how they were once one entity. We know they are mirrors of each other currently, both light and dark versions, but at one point in time, things may have been in perfect harmony with one power, both light and dark combined. I found no more logs from Dr. Essie, but I have used her algorithm to crack the data core of the Vex conceptual mind. That's the doodad we got from the Black Garden, right? Indeed. The data within contained the Vex's blueprints for their artificial veil, the Black Heart. It all but proved Dr. Essie's theory. Dr. Essie theorized that the paracausal energy of the Traveler operated on a quantum wavelength parallel to electrons. Um... Magnets? In simpler terms, the Traveler's power runs parallel to the forces of nature. Gravity, magnetism, sound, light. The Veil does this too. It is synchronized with the Traveler. Wherever the Traveler came from, the Veil may have as well. But what the Vex made, while connected to the Traveler, was inherently flawed. It did not create the link the Witness desired. Instead, it weakened the Traveler, created static in the flow of their cosmic forces. But it did reveal one intriguing possibility. That at one time, they may have been united. Part of a whole. <laughs> so, wait. Does this mean the light and darkness were the same once? One force? Dr. Essie believed so. I am not as convinced. But it is a theory. One many scholars will explore once this data is shared. But this data allowed me to calculate the telemetry of the beam the Veil fired at the Traveler. When the Witness linked to the Veil through a ghost, it created a faster-than-light connection of darkness to the Traveler's light. A, a bridge to the Traveler's consciousness. If it has one. But the beam did not stop at the Traveler. Rather, a point inside of it. Inside? Wait, what's inside the Traveler? No one knows. But if the data I've been able to extrapolate here is correct, that is where the Witness is now. Inside the Traveler. It may be the reason why the Traveler has gone dormant, its attention directed inward, what the true threat is. But I am speculating. There is more I need to study, but I fear it will take a substantially longer amount of time. How long do you need? Months. If we have that long left, that is. Until then, I suppose. Now we'll get back to Osiris's words there, but that was very interesting. The dreams of Alpha Lupi are also very important, and I might make a whole nother video on that topic. In Ghost Fragment the Traveler, it says it feels like lead and neutronium, an electroweak matter fashioned into a moon-sized ball that you must carry as you move. So that's how it describes the outside shell of this Traveler. Also, something weird to note, Fenchurch, who is Tess Everest's uncle, says he's been inside the Traveler and it smells like vanilla. But that could easily be made up and we don't know what this place smells like. Here's what we know about this new location from Bungie. Guardians will explore a new place called the Pale Heart, located inside the Traveler. Shaped by the Witness, but also influenced by the history and journey of the Guardians themselves. The Pale Heart destination will feature nostalgic callbacks from throughout the history of the Light and Darkness saga, including a version of the original Tower from Destiny. As the first linear destination in Destiny history, the Pale Heart will also gradually evolve. The Witness has the darkness, now it needs the light to enact this final shape. A shape where it can rewrite the universe, freeze everything to what it believes is correct. Inside, as mentioned, this space is shaped by whoever is inside. Not sure exactly how this works. Maybe it's shaped by everything inside, like the Guardians, the Witness, maybe all the souls like Cade who reside here, the memories. But it does seem the Traveler itself clearly has some type of sentience, right? So it makes you wonder, 
What was controlling this realm before, and is it still here? Maybe damaged, perhaps? Guardians enter here and the Traveler shapes it to our memories, the Cosmodrome, Europa, the Tower. And as we progress through the linear space and make our way to the Witnesses monolith, things get dark and corrupted. So many different beings seem to be able to control what's going on here. We also know, thanks to Amaru dialogue and the new activity, that the Traveler is in pain and needs our help. sense it in my light. Listen, imagine your god spoke to you, and all it did was scream for help. Yeah, it's kind of like that. So maybe the Traveler can't control who is shaping this realm and needs our help to free it. Whether it be some brain of the Traveler, its pale heart being corrupted, or maybe even a being like originally seen in concept art, we don't have a solid answer, only theories. I mean, we don't even know if that original character was inside the Traveler at all. It warned us of the Traveler's arrival, but we don't know what they had planned back then. Let's get back on track, though. Bungie says we will explore the pale heart of the Traveler. That's what this realm is, and we can clearly see this heart, I believe, in the trailer. The Witness told us in Witch Queen, your pale heart holds the key. We now see what it meant. The pale heart is the key the Witness needs to the light. This all brings up many questions that I'm sure will get resolved, hopefully. Why does this space exist? Is it to reshape the universe or build new ones? If the Traveler and Vale were together at some point, they would have all of these memories and power to shape what exists here. Something happened where they were split apart. The Traveler damaged and appearing on the Witness's homeworld and the Vale somewhere else among the stars. Was the Traveler damaged when the Veil was removed, if they were ever together at the start? Did the Witness cause this infection with the Collapse, or did it happen during Lightfall? That Osiris dialogue from Veil Containment is important. He basically told us that the Black Heart, which is a replica of the Veil created by the Vex, did connect to the Traveler. Maybe the Black Heart was what weakened it, causing static as it said. This would kind of explain the events of Destiny 1 and the Exo Stranger telling us we need to destroy the Black Heart so the Traveler could begin to heal. Find the Black Garden. Rip out its heart. Only then will your Traveler begin to heal. Although this kind of damaged the Traveler, the Black Heart wasn't enough to complete what the Veil could do. In Lightfall, we see it worked. And as Osiris mentioned, this beam didn't stop at the Traveler, it went straight through into its mind, into its pale heart, where we will explore at the beginning of next year. So there's some updated information about what we know on the inside of the Traveler. Let me know down below your thoughts and theories. This is always fun to discuss before we get the real answers. A pale heart exists here. Is there an actual being inside this realm? Or is the Traveler just this sort of creation engine? To wrap up this video, I'm going to show some more pictures from the press kit if you haven't seen them yet, and then the video is going to end. But if you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.